weather on Juma. Uh, is it permissible when you have a car? I think he has mixed up his question a little bit. Please ask him to re reword the question. Okay. And we'll get back to that. We'll go back to that one. So, yeah. uh, nice. The next question is from is from uh, Tom Anis. It's about uh, okay. Tom Anis says, uh, "May I'll increase you and us in knowledge." I mean, what is the ruling on women teaching a class of teenage boys or a mixed class of men and women? Say the question one more time, please. What is the ruling on women teaching a class of teenage boys or a mixed class of men and women? Right. As we said before, in Islam, the concept of free mixing, there are do's and there are don'ts. There are things that are clearly haram, there are things that are clearly permissible, and there are things which are in the middle. As far as that which is clearly haram, then we have the concept of seclusion. For a man to be alone with a woman whom he is not a mahram. He's not a mahram for that woman. He cannot be alone with her, traveling with her. Clearly haram, as is mentioned in the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Everybody understand this? A man being with a woman, even if it's more than one party, but it's fitna, there's riba, and doubtful things going on. It's not right. That's clearly what? Haram. A man being with women for whom he is a mahram, it's clearly permissible. Uh, a man speaking to a woman and there's other people, it's in a public place, it's an issue which is a need, a question, and there's no fit in that, that's what? Clearly permissible. As the Prophet said, answer questions and spoke to women during his time. Everybody understand these things? Now we have a, uh, also in the concept of a woman serving her guests in the house. You go over your house and a brother's wife comes out with a tray of tea and biscuits. Uh, and she puts down the sandwiches and the tea and she serves you and she goes back in the kitchen. Can you say that's haram? We say there are hadith in which some of the sahabi yet serve the rasul and the sahaba. Serve them in their company in front of them. Everybody understand this? Even though some people say, no, you can't do that. Your culture, sunnah to Nabi Sallallahu Different story. Okay, a lot of people, they mix up culture with Islam. Okay, in Islam, it's the culture for the women to be told not a slam, but in this country, totally out of the picture. You don't see them, smell them, hear them, anything, period. Okay, that meant that's going to be bad, but that's one thing. But in his hadith, in which this woman came to the Prophet, Omar spoke to the woman, she served the guests. They treated the men that were wounded on the battlefield. She said, we, we, were nur we nursed them, we gave them water, we looked after their wounds. So you can't make what is in the sunnah because of someone's culture. Everybody understand this? Whatever country, a yeah, culture may be. Everybody clear on this? As far as teaching in a classroom, then the modern day fuqaha, they have different views on this issue. Some of the fuqaha today, they say this is clearly haram. And free mixing between sexes is unlawful. Whereas it's a means of fitna. It's a means of evil. A door of evil being opened up. Men looking at women, women looking at men, men sitting next to women. It's going to eventually lead to what? Some type of fitna. Everybody understand this? And they use many proofs from the sunnah. In which the process and warns from entering upon women. Huh? Everybody clear on this? Uh, and then there are other fuqaha who say, rather, there's nothing wrong with this concept of free mixing, whereas there's no seclusion, and whereas there's education, people are being taught, people's not, minds shouldn't be on that level, so on and so forth. And there's some people who give more detail and they say if it's a means of necessity, necessity, in which there are no separate colleges, then that's one thing. If it's an extreme difficulty, then they say it's permissible. Or some of them say that the women come through a different door, they have a curtain, things like this. Everybody understand this? At the end of the day, if it's something that's doubtful, if it's something that is yani, dubious, something that doesn't seem or feel right, then you should avoid it. Everybody clear on this? That's the summary of that issue. Some of the other mass say that a college or a high school in which there's more than one person in a classroom and the people are generally covered is permissible. And some of them say it's totally what? Impermissible. That's my answer to that question. Wallahu ta'ala. Next question says, Wa alaikum salam. It says, for a minute I didn't recognize the name until I saw the rest of your name. Not sure if you remember me, but I always used to be in the Kensington Masjid. Puerto Rican, beard, stocky, kind, attended several of your classes. But anyways, here's my question, and please don't judge me, but I need some counsel. I'm currently married to a Christian woman who I've been with for 15 years. I have two children by her, two females. I was off my dean, but I met, and for a long period, now after several years, I go, I started to come back 
don't know why, but just wanted to start my deen. Don't ask me why, but one day I woke up and I walked back into the masjid and been trying to stay focused ever since. My Now my whole problem is my wife will not allow me to teach my children that have no knowledge of religion whatsoever, and she says it's my fault. Okay, I take the hit. Maybe it was my fault for not handling my business in the beginning, so then I asked several times to become Muslim, and the response was no. Now several years go by, and I yearn a Muslim companion that's bothering me to the point that I want to walk away from everything. And everywhere I want to spend Ramadan with a person who believes like me. My interest of this world has changed. I'd rather uh, talk about Sahaba rather than Kim Kardashian. And sex change fathers. Parentheses SMH. So I really lost. Uh, I'm really lost. I have a sister who I'm interested in. And I know what's up with my situation. My worries of leaving is that she can destroy me financially. Stop me from seeing my children and several other things. Not sure what to do. I hope you understand and don't judge. And I hope you make can make out what I'm saying out of all of this. I tend to go all over the place. Salaamu Alaikum. And the brother mentioned his name. We say, Wa Alaikum Salaam Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh. First and foremost, we turn back to Allah. Fix your relationship with Allah. Increase your status with Allah. And he will fix the relationship that you have between his slaves. One way or another, eventually. If you rectify your situation... If you put together your relationship as a slave of Allah, then in life subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything else will eventually fall into place. So therefore, this woman who bore your children, it is upon you, first and foremost, to take care of your children, to look after them financially, physically, look after them, love them, treat them kindly, and don't try to force her to be a Muslim for several reasons. First and foremost, you can't force, force faith into someone's heart. So he, he only has a, as he's only a fool fights a war, he knows he can't win. Only a fool fights a battle that he knows he cannot win. You cannot force a man into anyone's heart. You can give dawah, you can try, but you cannot abuse someone and tell what? They accept the same. It doesn't work like that. Allah is the one who guides. Huh? Allah is the one who what? Who guides. مَنْ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ وَأَعْلَمُ Allah says, indeed, you guide not, O Muhammad, who you want to guide. Allah guides who he wills, and he knows best of those who are truly guided. So the Prophet ﷺ in Hadith and Sahihain, Bukhari Muslim, when he went to Abu Talib on his deathbed, he says, Oh my uncle, say the Shahada, say that in Allah, Kalimatan Ashadu Laka and Allah, a word on which I can argue on your behalf, I can beg Allah on your behalf. And then those two ignorant men looked at him, Abu Jahl and Abdullah ibn Abi Umayy ibn al mughira they looked at him and he said, Atarqabu al-Millati Abdul Muttalib? So you want a religion other than that of your forefather, Abdul Muttalib? And the Prophet said the same thing, and he said the same thing back and forth, and eventually he died upon Kufr al-Shirk. And the Prophet, I slam, he saw Allah's forgiveness, and Allah sent down a verse in the ninth chapter of the Quran, not to seek forgiveness for the mushrikeen, even if they are close relatives. And also the verse of Surah Al-Qasas, uh, the 28th chapter of the Quran, you cannot guide whom you wish to guide. So therefore, you're fighting a war that you cannot win. Give advice, give dawah, try to show her through your actions, but you cannot force her to be a Muslim. Everybody understand this? And let alone the fact that you lived for many years other than, other than as a Muslim. So that's the first thing they want to say. The first thing they want to do is throw it in your face. As for the said to Musa, he says, didn't you just live among us? Huh? And you killed the man the other day? We raised you as a boy? And now you're saying you're Rasul of Rabbul Ali? It's the first thing that Pharaoh said. So this is what people want to try to do. So what you should do is try to live through righteous actions. Set an example and show the people the power of Iman, how it changed you significantly, sincerely, and it can change anyone being the next one, but you cannot rush faith. And a lot of brothers I've noticed here in New York City, the same thing happens. Okay, and I'm speaking generally, but I've noticed a lot of brothers. Okay, you find them full beard, sunnah, salafiyah, this and that. They invite you over their houses, they eat dinner. Uh, it's one brother, it's one time, it's not going to mention names, it's a true story. Brother, well known brother, established brother in the community, full beard. He said, Mufti, come over my house and eat dinner. Went over his house, he walked in, and he said, Salaamu Alaikum, you know, like, honey, I'm home, Fulan. Uh, this is Sheikh Mufti from the Masjid. She turned around and said, Salaamu Alaikum, hair out, tight clothes on. 
I'm like, what is this? He's like, yeah, this is my wife, Fulana. And it's a well-known, established brother in the community that you all know. The point of the story is what? Is that a lot of times, brothers, they become guided. They become enlightened. They leave off on the quote-unquote jahiliya days, but their families, what? And they say that clearly. Just because you're super religious, doesn't mean I'm super religious. Just because you brainwash, someone that may say, don't think I'm going to change. And we all used to drink and party and smoke and dance in Guyana. That's what I, I, I still want to do. Have as, and it's just one story. Many, many others I have. Remember my making it? It's a reality. So a lot of times why this happens is that people, they flip so fast. Or so fast, so quickly. Breakneck speed. And they do not gradually, progressively introduce their family to the deen and the sunnah. It goes so overnight, and then he tries to throw it and force it down her throat. And she says, what? La. And also the children, they also say, la. It's very unfortunate. So they have hikmah and da'wah, and the best example is through your actions. We did a five minutes of fight on this, with Brother Sayyid, huh? mm -hmm. on enemies within, about how family members can be your worst enemies as a Muslim. Make fun of you, laugh at you, huh? call you a saint call you this and call you that. Don't worry about what they say, just practice the deen through your actions. And if it's decreed by law, they'll accept the slam. Everybody understand this? As far as your children, nothing is gonna to happen to you unless the law decrees. So therefore, if you don't wanna be married to that Christian woman no more, and if you feel like that it's a fitting upon you, and you've tried, leave her in kindness and find some righteous Muslim sister. But know for sure is that no matter what you do, stay married, get divorced, is going to need supper. No situation is in and out. Especially involved 15 years order. Two children, you wouldn't need what? I wouldn't have feast. No matter what, he's gonna need what? Supper. One way or another, right? Whether he stays or whether he leaves, when he suburb. So therefore, that's my advice to you, is work on yourself, focus on yourself, be kind to that woman, give her the correct guidance, information, literature, or maybe another woman can explain to her, don't force it upon her. Don't force it upon her. Let Allah Azza wa Jalla open up her heart, and whatever the creed is going to happen, if she stops you from seeing your children, we say what? Is that no matter what happens, you try your responsibilities the best. Huh? And the honor in Islam, it's not wrong with having more than one wife. Get another wife, get a Muslim sister. You have to weigh out that situation. Allah SWT knows best. Next question says, Assalamu alaikum, hope all is well. The question came up today, is it permissible to eat the dinner in the masjid after breaking the fast during the month of Ramadan? May Allah bless you. We say, Wa alaikum salam wa Allah. There's nothing wrong with eating in the masjid. As is mentioned in many hadiths from them is the hadith of Ahl Sufa, the companions that lived in the masjid. And if they lived in the masjid, then they ain't in the masjid. Everybody clear on this? Right, maybe we can do this, the microphone thing, another time? Another time, inshallah. We say what? Is that Ahl Sufa, they lived in the masjid. And the Prophet of acknowledged them living in the masjid. Everybody clear on this? And hadith is in the Sahih. Another example is the girl that used to stay in the masjid. She used to be a slave, and she was manumitted, and she had a tent in the masjid. And she would go to Aisha's house, and she would tell Aisha about how she accepted Islam, and some of the wrongs that she was put through when she was a slave. Everybody understand this? If she lived in the masjid, then of course what? Also, Abdullah ibn Umar and many other companions would sleep and stay over in the masjid. So therefore there's nothing wrong with eating in the masjid with the condition that the masjid is to be kept clean, the masjid is to be respected. Huh? So the what? Respect is not to turn into a grease hall in which the masjid smells like grease. Uh, right here in this masjid one time, huh? we came in, Salat al Asr, there was a major walima going on. And I had no idea. No one told me. No one said anything to me. They made the masjid. Nothing. Well, lie. We walked into the masjid for salah. There was a million people in this place. The back was full of women. Most were uncovered. Some were full of brothers. People say, I've never seen a day in my life. Well, lie. I mean. And they all looked at me like, what are you doing here? Well, lie. Who is this guy? What planet did he come from? What rock did you cross from? I swear. Just maybe a couple months right in this shit. So you know me, I'm a simple type guy. I came in, made my turaqah, 
waited for the Iqama, and the place was smelling like food. Now, let me get to the highlight and put in the story. Afterwards, I gave a brief talk. Alhamdulillah. Uh, people, they sat, they listened to the talk. Then a couple other brothers came in the community. Sheikh Mufti, salam alaikum, I'm hugging a kiss. I was like, oh. Let's give him some food, get the shake some food. Yeah, get him a plate, get a plate. I don't want no food. I don't want no food. Before I was Sheikh Mufti, you didn't want to offer me nothing. I don't want any food, nothing personal or arrogant. I just don't want any food. Wallahi. The brother brought me a big plate, bring the shake some more, bring him some sweets, bring him some guy in his sweets, bring him some juice, bring him some tea. I don't know him, the more the story is, is that all those people, they skedaddled, left the masjid, scrammed right before Maghrib, and the masjid smelled like food the rest of the night. As you thought, it's just all you could smell was just curry in the whole masjid. Everybody understand this? So the fact of the matter is, is another true story. If you want to eat in a masjid, then respect the masjid, clean the masjid, have some incense, some Lysol, some potpourri, huh? Get rid of the trash. Make sure the masjid is a place of ibadah, not a mess hall. And it shouldn't be done in which every single time people just keep eating, eating the masjid and make it greasy and sloppy. Nah, that shouldn't be done. As far as the sheer permissibility of eating in the masjid, then there's nothing wrong with that. No more stories, I'm sure you. Uh, no more what? No more stories. Let's move on to the next question. Let's have more questions yeah, um, from the virtual disciples. But, uh, Allah, what is the ruling on praying in the masjid before the Aqama? When it is called, not praying with the Imam. Question is unclear. Please be clear with the question. Shall I tell her? Ask her, please. Another question. To write it. So, no. what, what is the ruling on praying in the masjid before the Aqama and when it is called, not praying with the Imam? You understand? Like, not, not praying with the Imam. It's, well, you repeat the question 50 times, it's unclear. Okay. Sister, another question. She prayed, she prayed before the Jama'ah. Before the Ikama was called. Okay. Then, when the Ikama was called, she didn't pray with the Jama'ah. Okay, the question is, does she know that that's the Jama'ah Ikama? Yes. She should break her Salah and enter the prayer with them. Um, break her Salah and enter the prayer what? With the Imam. Even though the congregation is not looking to upon a woman, but when she comes to the masjid, as if she's a man. As if what? As if she's a man. She starts taking on most of the rulings of men. Now she prays the congregation and things like this. Everybody understand this? Oh, well, oh, Allah. The next question is uh, from uh, Mustafa. In the book of Adhan, in Sahih al-Bukhari, in Abbas on a muddy day on Juma, even Abbas told the people to pray in your we had homes. Does this apply to us in this day as well? Is a problem. We say, for the hadith and for the benefit that you gave us, hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas and the Sahih, that our words well. Every time someone shares a hadith with us, reminds us, teaches us, it's a benefit. We thank you sincerely, that's first and foremost. Secondly, we say is that if there's an extreme difficulty, it's very inclement weather, uh, uh, they say bad weather conditions, snowing heavily, raining heavily, extremely cold, black ice on the road, quote unquote, uh, raining cats and dogs, things like this. Uh, we say that it's permissible for a person to pray in his home if a person at the masjid to combine the salah not to have to come out again a second time in extreme weather conditions in extreme weather conditions and it applies to this day and no matter what type of technology the people have to disturb the class huh? no matter what type of technology you have it's still a difficulty and just what about a month ago they shut down the roads here in New York City mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with all of the technology tires 4 by 4s they shut down the roads because of the snow because of the blizzard so therefore, yes, it does apply. However, it doesn't apply 100% as in those days, where the roads were made for a month. It was a hardship and a difficulty. Everybody understand this? Everybody feel this? There were no paved roads, tires and cars, animals, it's a bit different, yes. Even the nature of the shoes is different. The nature of the soul. You didn't have vibrams back then, huh? What do you call them? Uggs? Uggs? What do you call them? Uh, everybody running around wearing those shoes. They didn't have those things. So there are some conditions that were different during those times. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. That's the answer to it. In brief, bidden Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're going to stop here. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Jazakum Allah khairan.
Uh, you can make the announcement, please, for them about the class on Sunday, please. In Philadelphia. Is the Juma going to be live streamed tomorrow? No. No. I'm not going to do that. It's going to make people not come for me. Are you sure? What, what about women that pray at home? Sick people. Kalas. No problem. No bullshit. It doesn't matter to me. I'm going to up to you. Rain, sea, hell, snow. I got to get here another hour earlier. What's the, the, the slogan of the postman, huh? All right, we're going to live stream, Juma, just because uh -huh. we're going to live stream. Neither sleet or hell nor rain will stop them from their mission. Inshallah. That's what it says, huh? Uh, at the end of the day, inshallah, hopefully, Allah will make it easy for us okay. to live stream the khutbah tomorrow, perhaps. And if not, the next class will be in Masjid Taqwa. Tomorrow after Salat al-Maghrib on Bulug al-Maram, the Book of Marriage. We'll try our best to live stream that as well. Then on Saturday, we have class here, hopefully after Salat al-Maghrib, and then after Salat al-Isha and Masjid al-Ansar. And that's going to be on Bulug al-Maram after Maghrib, and the Masjid al-Ansar for the Hadith of Nawi, that will be live streamed. And perhaps on Sunday, we can live stream the Fajr al faida if it's possible, a lot is best. And then hopefully in the city of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, my hometown, uh, they have the Pray As You See Me Pray Conference, which is going to be held at Masjid Toba in Philadelphia. And Alhamdulillah, there are going to be many uh, Tulab al -Idn, actual Tulab al -Idn, real Tulab al -Idn. Brothers who have studied overseas, graduated. Brothers who have studied considerably, actually learned. Uh, brothers who want to teach Ilm, Ilm Allah. We want to do a conference, an all day conference, with regards to the Salah. Everything about the Salah. The importance of the Salah, the virtues of the Salah, the benefits of the Salah, Jama'ah, how to pray, fiqh of the recommended voluntary acts of prayer, the Nawafil Salah, things like this. And inshallah, it's going to start, inshallah, I believe, at 11.30 a.m. And it'll probably end uh, after Salah to Isha, it's supposed to be an exam, and things given out. That's Sunday. Inshallah, subhanahu wa we'll try our best to stream as much as that we can. And if not, when I get there, perhaps after Salat and Maghrib, my talk starts, we'll live stream that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sure knows best. Uh, hopefully, we'll have another meeting in which we'll have the ability to answer more of your questions. Inshallah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. No. Inshallah, if we get there early, we're going to try to live stream the whole event. Inshallah. Uh, we'll we'll try our best to, to live stream as much as we can. can. Take one last question. Uh, a woman finishes her menses during the daytime in Ramadan. After she purifies herself, <coughs> purifies herself, does she have to fast the remaining part of that day or fast a complete day? A woman who becomes clean and pure in the daytime, we say she does not have to fast the remaining part of that day. She doesn't have to remain what? She doesn't have to make the what? Hey, well, yeah, I mean, her, she has to make it the day anyway. Hmm. Some of the ulama they say, some of the fuqaha may say, that she can't eat or drink because of the sacredness of the time. Hurmatul waqt. The sacred time. It's Ramadan time. You shouldn't even drink. You say that's not necessarily the most correct stance. A person could be traveling. A person could be sick. A person could be mujahid. He said, A person could be a lifeguard. And the list goes on of excuses of breaking the fast. And if Allah and His Messenger made it permissible for them to break their fast, why do they have to deprive themselves of the rest of the day? And they have to make it up. So we say that's not that, that's not that strong. Allahu ta'ala. However, if a person feels they want to avoid it, stay safe, refrain from eating and drinking all the rest of the day, that's best to avoid any complications. Wallahu ta'ala.